So we were here buying a ticket for ourselves in the airport in Warsaw. And we saw this lady who was trying to buy a ticket and she needs to fly today from Warsaw to Brussels and there were no options available or they were really expensive. Or you could buy for cheaper than what they were offering. It was like a thousand bucks flying one day. Uh, but we saw that you can get for like four or five hundred on the internet. So we saw, oh, you can buy for Wizz Air. So we walked over to the Wizz Air office here to ask, can we buy this ticket and put her on the plane? She said, actually, no, because this lady does not have an international passport. In Ukraine, they have what's called an internal passport. And inside of this passport, it's a leftover idea from the Soviet days. There's only like three countries in the world that have it. It's like Russia, Ukraine, and North Korea or something that has this idea of an internal passport. These airlines are not able to handle that in their system because they have to have an international passport to allow someone to fly. The only option that we have is to buy her a train ticket. We're not able to buy the train ticket online for some reason, so we're going to try to go to the actual train station and buy it. So this train that we found for her has two connections. It's a total travel time of around 19 hours. So we brought this lady to the main train station here. Uh, so it looks like we'll just leave her here because we've got to go run and do some other stuff. So. So we're falling behind Oksana, who's driving our van, our Nissan Prima Star 2010 with a 2.0 liter engine, which is actually not that much, but it gets the job done. We started having issues with it. One of them is it doesn't turn on until the second try. The second issue is that we cannot move the clutch very well. So when you try to switch into second gear now, actually you can't go into second gear at all. The third problem is that Inside of the engine, there are some little pieces of metal. The fuel pump and the injector for the diesel is not working well. The fourth diesel injector is busted and the fuel pump also has an issue and needs to be replaced. So we've already gone to three different mechanics and this will be actually the fourth one. We've been reaching through all of our connections and through some biker guys. Uh, we have a guy who's at the front and he was in one of these biker clubs and he has some friends in Poland and they know a mechanic. He thinks that he can start working on it tomorrow and that he can have it done in about a week. The estimated cost at this point is 7,000 Polish zloty. So we're at this fixing place. He's gonna take a look at some stuff in the morning. He's busy for the rest of the day. They work on these big trucks here. Uh, we left our van there. They're going to look at it uh, from it with a cold start in the morning and we'll go from there. We saw this sign that said Ukrainian hairdresser, so we decided to get a haircut there. And it turns out that she's from Kiev and also from the left bank, which is the part of the city that we live on. So happy to support the local Ukrainians here in Warsaw. In Warsaw, and he met this American lady at the airport and picked up all the stuff that she brought, which was from donations from our friends in the US. So thank you very much. Here are 56 AK-47 pouch holders, 30 approximately tourniquets, a bunch of Israeli bandages, a bunch of Zippo hand warmers, medical pouches, binoculars, and sleeping bags. Thank you. These are the ones that you saw, uh -huh, uh -huh. right? Are those the yes. ones that you saw earlier? <laughs> yeah, they look a little bit scary. <laughs> That's, yeah, all the brown ones I think would be good. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. And she probably has even more. Can we take all of this? Oh what, my goodness. What are those? Those are grenade pouches. <laughs> For $4, that's a pretty good deal. How many do they have? This whole barrel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the bag, the bag. Okay, I better help him, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm out of the hospital in Warsaw. I was thrown up for five or six days and they took me in and put some IVs in me. I got a little bit stabilized. The cost was going to be less than a thousand zloty, but they said because I fled Ukraine, it was free. So thank you very much for the Polish hospital for the free treatment. I cannot complain about that. Uh, now we're going to the airport to pick up some suitcases and our friend David picked up our van here. Seems like it works. So we're back in business. Say hi, Oksana.
Um, so these Ukrainian Americans just brought us all this stuff from the airport. Thank you very much. It's a bunch of helmets and things like that. And they brought them from North Carolina, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank Charlotte, you. North Carolina. Charlotte. Thank you very much. You're welcome. A girl just landed from Paris and she was staying with some friends there, but now she's going back to her home in Irpin, which is near Kiev and it was badly damaged. And she will find out if there's anything left of it. I hope so. You need some help, Oksan? Okay, let's see what we got in here. Oh yeah, so what is this? This is a pouch that you can attach to your vest using the Molly system. That's what these things are here. These are some vests, it looks like plate carriers. Here's some belts, metal clasps. Oh yeah, these are the helmets. Look at this. I bought these off of eBay and sent them to my parents' place. They're from various sources. They're all, ouch, that hurt actually. They're all ballistic helmets. So, pretty awesome. Oops, the bag got ripped. Okay, nothing too heavy. Okay, so these Ukrainian Americans just flew from Chicago and uh, the young guy is a pilot here, so he was able to get two suitcases for free. And also the cost of the tickets themselves were quite cheap. <laughs> This young guy who is a pilot in Chicago is Ukrainian and he was in Kyiv just in January and he said if the war starts I'll fly back to Kyiv and I'll join the military and I'll fight. And it just so happened that a week or two later after he was in Ukraine he broke his leg and now he can't fight effectively which is why he was hobbling around and he said well I guess that's God's way of telling me that I, I shouldn't fight but I can find another way to help out and that is by using his privileges of flying for inexpensively he can bring over a lot of suitcases. Oksana's on the phone with people like all day long. So those first Ukrainian guys who we met said, oh, we have some extra medical stuff we can give you. So we're going to go meet them and get some more stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is a hospital donated any kind of surgery, various kinds of surgical supplies. Okay. Is it I can give you lists of all the things Perfect. that's on there. On the inside, there's a little packing slip. What are you doing, Oksana? Oksana's always like, we need to repack. I'm like, what do we need to repack for? Everything's already packed. She's like, no, we gotta repack it. Because it all goes <laughs> to different people. Okay, well, it can go there. It still needs to go the same direction. Oh. <laughs> Look at all this work we did. Now it's all for naught. No, on the floor. this backpack needs to be repacked. Uh huh, okay. Well, it's already packed beautifully. No, Look at how nice this is. inside of that backpack to go in there. We just need a backpack itself. The backpack itself is already there. Oh, look what's in that backpack, actually. Check these things out. Objective Products International. This is very interesting to me because we just saw a picture of this exact plate that this lady was buying in this thrift shop. And she sent us a photo of it. And now here these plates are. It's just so cool that like a day or two later, we see the exact thing. Same thing that we were looking at on the internet. Here it is in our hands and it's going to go to the front. So these helmets here I had found on eBay. It's just interesting to see what they actually look like. This one is pretty awesome. It's got some nice uh, cushions on here. Not sure exactly where it's from, but pretty good one. This one looks a little bit older. It is from Italy, I believe. Somehow it ended up in the US kind of like a souvenir. But now it can be made useful. And this one was interesting. What does it say right here? Look at this. Inside this U.S. Army guide that was printed in 1985, it says right here, studies from Vietnam show that casualties could have been reduced by 40% if every soldier had worn his helmet and vest. So kids, don't forget to wear the helmet. Got here, AK-47 specific cleaning tools, gun cleaning kit. And these are in great need. Apparently cleaning your gun all the time is important so it doesn't get jammed or misfunction. Look at this, this is our jackpot right here. Magazine pouches. Three mag pouch, Molly system, attaches to the front of your vest. And there's like 
a hundred of them here. Oh, $2, they're only $2. And new one of these is like 15 or 20 or 25 or even 30 bucks here in Poland. $2 for America. Oh yeah, it's, it's pretty comfy actually, a lot comfier than the bicycle helmets I wore when I was a kid. Look what we got here. Gun straps. Also, balaclavas. More plates in here. Some water filter stuff. And plate carriers. So this family that we're staying with in Warsaw, they just had their kid born yesterday. The wife was pregnant when they left the war and the exact hospital that they planned on giving birth at was bombed. It's the same one that she gave birth at before. And her father said, oh, I have a son who's at the front and he needs a helmet and some other stuff. So we said, hey, we got tons of stuff in our van here uh, that we just brought over from the US. People did. Got a helmet for him. Two helmets actually, he can pick his favorite color. Magazine pouches that you attach to the vest. And then also, these pockets are in high demand as well because you can put all kinds of useful stuff in here, your radio, your water bottle. We just found out that the girl who was pregnant with triplets got the stroller that we had ordered from money that people had, had given in order to give to this girl and it just delivered to her. And so she sent us a video with the delivery and also how incredibly pregnant she is so hopefully the birth of the three kids will go well so now we're heading to the polish gun store at one that I haven't been to yet which is apparently really good and a guy that i met at the first military store he said hey i have some connections there and they can place an order for these special rail mounts that allow you to attach a sight on top of an ak-74 and the only place you can buy it is here in poland i haven't found it in the u.s either so he placed this order for me three weeks ago and we've been waiting and waiting and today finally we have our van fixed and i'm back here and i'm not sick anymore and easter is over so it's tuesday now and some stuff is open again so we're going to pick up this order This gun store is like someone's home. This is a really good store. This is the best one I've been in so far. Gun store. From America. Very cool, thank you. Complex, you're talking about what, like uh, like 4,000 then, yeah? 4,200, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, this plate we have there, mm -hmm. with the steel cord. That's the yeah. one with the strike mm -hmm. face? The one yeah, with the strike this face is one. the same bed. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, helmet, uh, Croatian uh, Sestan Bush. And that's? Uh, free egg. See, okay. Because there was no helmet which will uh, uh, survive and stop an AK bullet. I see, Even okay. if the Helmet will stop the bullet, the head will not survive. Uh, the yeah, I, see, I, the, I understand. The power of the uh, bullet too, is too much trauma yeah. for the, the brain. <laughs> You're getting a vest? Yeah, from my brother in law and with uh, the ceramic plates as well. Nice. Okay. The cost is uh, 2200 Okay, cool. Let's get the American one yeah. then. Yeah, okay. two American ones, please. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> so that was an awesome gun store. We got everything we need. We got the rail mounts, AK magazines, multiple different kinds. We got the mag clips. So you can stick two magazines together and flip these, quickly flip back and forth. And we got something else as well. Now we're going to the Polish guy who told me about the store, and I'll buy. Uh, one vest from him, which is lightweight and it's level four, and he got it at a better deal than at the store. One interesting thing I heard at that store was the guy there was saying they ordered a hundred helmets from China, and China would not ship it to Poland. Instead, they had to ship it to Germany, and so it just shows that Germany is not really on Ukraine's side that much. It's kind of more on China's and Russia's side, and their politicians really haven't been doing nearly as much as a lot of other countries. Um, 
Estonia has sent like 13 times more weapons, even though Germany has like 42 times the population. Um, now is their chance to step up, but they're not. And so just lets you know what side everyone is really on. Just filled up the van here and it was 543 PLN, which is 126 bucks. So this is what we got yesterday at the Polish gun store, which is the rail mount. I'm trying to find out how we can register to stay in Poland for longer than 90 days. I'm at the Krakow main train station and this world central kitchen right here, they're the ones that we've seen the most prevalent on the actual ground. Some people have been asking, what kind of organization should I give to you? As far as I can tell, that is the best one. They recently had their kitchen that was in Kharkiv Sheld, and I know that they're right at the front. I've seen them here on the grounds. Oksana even ate there one time. It's legit. We haven't seen any UN, anything, no other kind of organization, but World Central Kitchen, they're here. If you want to give money to people who are feeding people, that's them. Yeah. Yes. He's amazing. He's, yeah. he's your friend guy, but he, he's with, uh, with my friend. <laughs> so much. You need the cargo plane. You need the cargo stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll have to send us those photos. <laughs> the first bag is coming. Ooh, they're all our bags. <laughs> <laughs> Давай, работай, работай. Work, Sana. We'll switch after this. No. I'll film when you work. No. I was like, come on, can you lift it up? Two people brought 24 bags, and they had no idea how they were going to make it out of the baggage claim area. That's why we snuck in to help them out. Oh. Oh. Well, we got him here, that's all we can do. <laughs> We're not going to make it to Ukraine at this rate. One, two, three, smile. Yeah. Slava Ukraine. Get away from Slava. Awesome. So these 24 bags were actually taken on the plane for free. They went to the check-in counter in LAX airport and they said, hey, we're taking this stuff to Ukraine. It's humanitarian help. It's other kinds of help. Any chance we can get it cheaper? Because they told them it would be $245 per bag. The girl there said, give me a second. She was gone for like 10 minutes, they said. She came back and said, we'll check them all. No charge. They're like, awesome. So six and a half thousand dollars worth of bags from Lufthansa. Thank you very much. Okay, we just left the Krakow airport. It is now exactly 3 p.m. We're driving to the Ukrainian border. It's gonna take about three and a half hours. And then once we cross the border, we'll take it to the base. And then our guys are gonna take it further after that. Oksana was not paying attention on the Google Maps here and we're taking some weird turns. And we're going down this one lane road. What's going on up here and they're checking people. Okay, this is bad. We don't know what's going on up there. We're all stuck. No one's making any progress. This guy was saying that these cars are getting imported, so that's why it's causing a line, and also the police are holding people up for a couple hours. I think it's always been the best crossing. Don't need to wait in any line, but now something has changed. Driving on these bad Slovakian roads for a few hours. Going to the next border crossing. We'll be there in 20 minutes. At least we're making progress. We're just making progress not in Ukraine. Uh, but the unknown factor that we're about to face is how big the line is for this border. And we're coming up on the Slovakian Ukrainian border. And we see a big line of cars. Bummer. Okay, so I was going to talk to the police and they said that this car would show up here shortly. And it did. And then they said we can follow them to the front because we have humanitarian help. So all of these cars that we've seen so far do not have Ukrainian license plates. There was a law that recently passed that said that you can import a foreign car without having to pay import tax. So normally import tax is 30 to 50% of the price of the car, which makes cars in Ukraine very expensive. But because of the war and so many cars were destroyed, they decided to make it cheaper. Oh, 
There we go. Дивіться, ви пройдете кордон зараз, виїжджаєте направо, там кольцо направо і пішов. Окей, зараз це 6.30 а.м. Україні і ми вже відбували на борту. Що за довгий ніч. Зараз наші хлопці, на жаль, ми вже планували на виїжджати, але, можливо, ми зустрінемо їх тут. Побачимо, як ми можемо організувати хендоф. Next. So we delivered everything here to this base in Western Ukraine and then right away a couple hours later the guys took everything further on and they spent the night in central Ukraine and now they're going on deeper to eastern Ukraine. Unfortunately there was a problem with one of their tires but hopefully they'll get it repaired and they'll be back on the road again. So some of the helmets and things that we were sending, we brought to our friends and they take it to people further. But some of them were other individuals who said, hey, I have a relative, a relative, whoever who needs a helmet, can you please get it to us through this company called Nova Poshta, which means new post. They deliver not to your door, but to another location. And then someone can come to that location, and pick stuff up. So before the war started, this company was doing extremely well. Before you couldn't really go and leave something by someone's door, it would disappear before you got home. But with Nova Poshta, you say, hey, I'll send it to number two in this town and then they come to number two, they pick up their package and it's all good, it's all secure. And plus you can do it so that not the sender pays for the shipment, but that the receiver pays for the shipment. Now Oksana is going to ship a bunch of other packages that we have here. Did they deny that package? It's too heavy. It's too big. It's too big. Okay, we'll find another one. We need to go to another one. So we're trying to, standing, standing here trying to ship stuff and the air siren started going off. So they're not shipping anything until the air siren stops. So basically the air siren started going off and nothing is open as long as the air siren is going on. Uh, so we're just standing around hoping that no missiles land anywhere near us. But meanwhile, business is held up and we can't get our stuff sent. Uh, so we can't get back to Warsaw on time to meet some people. So we thought, well, the air siren is going off. We would just come here to the pharmacy and buy some stuff. But it says everyone go to the bomb shelter, basically. So they're closed and we can't buy the medicine that we need. Ничего не прочее. Ну. Yeah, the sound itself has stopped, but there's an app that says, is it officially going on or not? Uh, we have to keep going back to Poland, but our friends came and they're standing there with all of our stuff and they're going to send it for us. So that's it for this trip. We have sent off everything that we did on this load. So until next time. Okay, so we just passed through the border and we got pulled over for deeper inspection and they had a big scanning machine in there and they had the spot where they could inspect underneath the vehicle they had an x-ray machine so they looked through everything more closely thankfully we're basically empty because we're going back to poland but now as you can see there's tons and tons of cars here and we just asked the guys right at the border how long were they waiting there and they said three days 72 hours without you know, wanting to lose your spot in line. You can't just get out and go to McDonald's and come back. You gotta stay here and keep your spot or you lose your spot. All these cars are getting imported because Ukraine has said that you can now import oh, a car boy. without having to pay tax on it. Uh, but now, because that doesn't exist, all of a sudden cars got way cheaper. The problem is that that slows us down to bring in humanitarian help, but it allows a lot more cars to enter the country at a reasonable price. So I have this bottle you that I can't open. So we're and gonna I tried open it many, many, many times. Don't break the glass. There you go. Oh, I see my head. Enjoy. <laughs> Take a drink.
out here with the fresh mountain spring water. Polish Carpathians. It's Polish. Hazowana woda. Hazowana. Gusinka. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like that,